Hi everyone, this is the video lesson for 5.3 optimization problems involving exponential functions, part 2. So before we continue with example number 2, if you haven't watched the warm-up for example 1, please go back to part 1 before continuing with part 2. Now this is number 3 from your textbook, the squirrel population in a small self-contained Forests were studied by a biologist. The biologist found that the squirrel population P, measured in hundreds, is a function of time, T, where T is measured in weeks. The function is P of T, which equals to 20 divided by 3, sorry, 20 divided by 1, plus 3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times T. Part A, determine the population at the start of the study when time equals to 0. So whenever this is something that's given to you in a word problem, it's really asking for the initial population. So for part A, you're looking for P of 0. And again, you can take the calculator. You can even do it mentally. But what happens is you're going to plug in time to be 0. And negative 0 0.02 times 0 is going to give you 0. E to the power of 0 that's going to give you 1. So 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5. Now, of course, you've got to be careful. The common mistake is here. If you wrote down the initial population is 5, meaning you're saying there are 5 squirrels, then you made a mistake. And again, you've got to go back and look at the fact that it's given in terms of hundreds. So really, the initial population is going to be 500 and not 5. And that's how you do part A. Part B, the largest population the forest can sustain is represented mathematically by the limit as time is approaching to infinity. Determine this limit. So if you write this out for part B, I'm trying to squeeze all this in the space, so I'll write it here. You're trying to find the limit as time is approaching to infinity of 20 divided by 1 plus 3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times t. And again, in the world of limits, one approach is you can plug this in with quotation marks. So in the world of limits, this is going to be 20 divided by 1 plus 3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times infinity. Now again, you can write this out in a couple of steps. The numerator, you can copy. The denominator, you can copy the 1 plus 3. You can even copy e. Now, when you have negative 0 0.02 times infinity, in the world of limits, that's going to be negative infinity. And this equals to, again, you can put this in quotation marks, uh, 3 times e to the power of negative infinity. That becomes 3 divided by e to the power of infinity. If you go slightly faster, you will realize that e, which is 2.7 approximately, times itself infinitely many times will give you infinity in the world of limits. And 3 divided by infinity in the world of limits, this is going to approach to 0. So what that means is this limit ultimately will give you 20 divided by 1, which is going to be 20. And again, 20 is not the right answer, which we talked about from part A. It's in the order of hundreds. So for the same reasoning, uh, it's going to be 2,000. So what this means is over time, the population is going to approach to 2,000. And that's how you do part B. Part C. Determine the point of inflection. Now to do this, there's a couple of steps and there's a lot of mechanical steps which I'll go with you. But the uh, idea is you find the first derivative, you find the second derivative, you set it to zero and you solve for time. And whatever that works out to be, that becomes the point of inflection. So there's a lot of steps here. What you should do is you should press pause Redefine really the first and the second derivative on your own 
when you press play again, I'll be here and I'm going to go through this with you step by step by step. Okay, I hope you've tried this. Here we go. Again, I'm starting with P prime of T, which is the first derivative, so part C. Now, again, this is going to be 20 divided by 1 plus 3 times e to the power of negative, so upon 0, 2t. And again, ideally, you don't have to apply the quotient rule. You can use the chain rule, but I recognize that most students would jump to the quotient rule because they recognize it's a fraction. And because most students do that, I'm just going to demonstrate that to customize it to your line of thought. So again, you know, applying the quotient rule, the first step is you square the denominator. Step two, you can copy the bottom to the top. Step three is to multiply by the derivative of the top, which is zero, which is why the chain rule is a little bit faster. Minus, you copy the top and you multiply by the derivative of the bottom. And again, if you look at this carefully, this is three times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times t times the derivative of the exponent, which is negative 0 0.02. So again, this here, that's the chain rule, which I'm just gonna write down quickly. I hope you know this by now. And if you don't, make sure you practice enough homework to follow through. Now again, your goal is to find the inflection point. So you have to find the second derivative in a moment. At this point, you can just clean this up a little bit. Negative 20 times negative 0 0.02, that's going to be 1.2. Uh, times, oh sorry, it's 20 times 3 times negative 0 0.02 times negative 1, that's 1.2. You can copy e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times t all over. You can still copy the denominator as is. So that's the first derivative. Now we're going to keep going. We're going to find a second derivative. And we're going to apply the quotient rule, which means p double prime equals 2. And again, you're going to square the bottom. That's going to be 1 plus 3 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 t quantity square to the power of 2. So ultimately, that's going to be to the power of 4. you see that in the next line. You copy the bottom to the top, 1 plus 3 times e to the negative 0 0.02 t quantity square times the derivative of the top, which is 1.2 times e to the negative 0 0.02 t times negative 0 0.02, again, that's the chain rule that I've mentioned, minus, you copy the top, which is 1.2 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times t, and you multiply by the derivative of the bottom. Uh, this is going to be 2, because you're applying the chain rule, times 1 plus 3, times e to the negative 0 0.02 t to the power of 1 times the internal derivative, which is negative 0 0.06 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 t. So I'm going a little bit faster there. I hope you're still connected. This is important. Your uh, skills for finding the derivative must be amazing in order for this to make sense. Now, I'm going to set this to 0. And my goal is to find t. And then once I find t, I plug it back in, and that's the point of inflection. Now again, you do want to look at the numerator and the denominator. Uh, but before we do that, notice how there's a common factor of 1 plus 3 e to the power of negative 0 0.02t, 1 from the top, 1 from the bottom. So you can cross one term from each part. Now again, if you look at the top and you set this to zero, there's also a common factor that you want to bring to the front. And the common factor is going to be 1.2 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02t. And in the second bracket, that's going to give you 1 plus 3 times e to the negative 0 0.02t. I'll put this in brackets, times negative 0 0.02 minus, I hope you're following the mechanical steps, 
uh, minus 2 times, and I, I guess it could be plus since negative negative is positive, times so point so 6 times e to the power of negative so point so 2t, close the bracket, close another bracket, just like that. Now again, of course, you can set the denominator to 0 as well. That will leave to you. You can divide this into two different columns, and again, in the first column, you can make this equal to 0, and negative 0.02t becomes positive by bringing it to the bottom. And here, I hope you can see that there are no solutions, and I'll leave that to you to kind of figure that out. And of course, uh, in the second bracket, I can copy the whole thing, make that equal to 0. And if you want, you can expand this a little bit. Negative 0 0.02 minus 0 0.06 times e to the negative 0 0.02t plus 0 0.12 e to the power of negative 0 0.02t. And again, once you collect like terms, you would discover negative 0 0.06 plus 0 0.12. That's going to be 0 0.06 times e to the power of negative 0 0.02 times t. You can bring negative 0 0.02 to the right. That makes it positive. The opposite of multiplying by 0 0.06 is to divide by 0 0.06. And of course, e to the power of negative 0 0.02 t equals 2. And you can leave this as a fraction, which is 1 over 3. And again, we mentioned this earlier in the chapter. I hope you remember this. The opposite of e is ln. So you can ln both sides. And again, this is going to give you negative 0.02t, which equals to ln of 1 over 3. Last but not least, the opposite of multiplying by negative 0.02 is to divide by negative 0.02. And if you take the calculator and work this out, this will give you approximately 54.9. And again, you want to form the habit of finding the coordinates, not just the x value or t in this case. So you can take 54.9, plug it back into the function. And once you do that, the corresponding y value is going to be positive 10. So the point of inflection occurs at 54.9 comma 10. Now again, just take a moment and verify this. I want to make sure this is in agreement with your mechanical steps. So I'm going to continue this in part 3, there's still parts uh, D and E which I'm going to go through. I hope this makes sense.